Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise. On Wednesday, May 9th, 2017, 2017, I think I said that yesterday, 2018, and I have got to get ready for my interview with Paul Ehrlich to air on my new uh, YouTube channel, The Collapse Chronicles, uh, world premiering on Sunday. I'm going to be doing my Collapse Chronicle interviews every Sunday night. So uh, I am very excited about that and hope you can tune in. But before that interview, I need to do what I've been doing pretty much every Wednesday for what now, five or six years. And for the last time, for the last time, uh, I will be bringing you my weekly climate change meltdown roundup rant where I simply open the pages of the mainstream media and all of these various emails my lieutenants are sending to me to, for more evidence of how this planet is heading directly into a burning lake of fire on this gorgeous spring day in uh, Austin, Texas. So, uh, good Lord, and I am real, ah, shit, I, uh, I better hurry. I cannot keep Paul Ehrlich waiting. <clears throat> I mentioned, uh, I've already read the headlines of several one, several of these stories, but anybody wanting to see a, a picture of the end times, <coughs> good God, this story, all sorts of versions about these 200 horses trapped in a muddy northern Arizona pond. Good God, have you, have you seen that shit? Uh... There's, there's all different. Uh, this one is saying more than 100. Uh, some other stories are saying almost 200. Um, found dead this week at a muddy watering hole in northern Arizona are being buried at the site. Uh, the stock pond in the, the Navajo Reservation had, had been a reliable source of water for animals over the years, but as drought has worsened, it began drying up earlier and earlier and trapped the animals. Uh, okay, it's according to this census, 118 dead horses. Uh, Good God. Anyway, anybody who wants to see a, a sign of the, of the end times. And as long as we're over in the U.S. Southwest, what does it look like here in the first week of May 2018? Gee, how many years have I been bringing you this story? Outlook for vital southwestern U.S. river remains grim. My bullshit detector button is dead, but no shit, Sherlock. the outlook for the most important river in the southwestern U.S. remains grim this summer after April storms failed to produce much snow in the mountains that feed the waterway. Uh, this is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration said the Colorado River is expected this year to carry only 43% of the average amount of water into Lake Powell, one of the two huge reservoirs that store and, distri and distribute the river. This is the fifth lowest forecast in 54 years. Uh, but don't worry, authorities have said that Lake Powell and its companion Lake Mead will be high enough to avoid mandatory cutbacks for water users this year. Ain't that great? The Colorado River presently serves about 40 million people in 6,300 square miles of farmland in the U.S. and Mexico. The river is... <clears throat> 
under increasing stress because of rising demand and declining flows. The region has been in drought for 18 years, long enough that some researchers say it may represent a permanent shift. No shit, Sherlock. And let's see, what is the weather forecast this week in the southwest? Record temperatures skyrocketing into triple digits in the southwest. It is only the first week of May, but temperatures are already skyrocketing in the southwest. The highest temperature in the nation Sunday was in Thermal, Thermal, California, where it reached a daily record of 110 degrees. Phoenix hit a record high of 106 on Sunday, breaking its record from 1947. Tucson hit their first 100 degree reading of the year too. More heat is on the way with Las Vegas possibly hitting its first triple digit reading of the year this week. Oh shit, Sherlock. Oh, uh, well I see my computer has eaten the story while the US shivered while the US shivered the world simmered in its third hottest April on uh, on record so April 2018 being the third hottest April since my computer ate the story I don't know what the first and second were but I'm 99% sure they were both uh, certainly from 2010 until now. Uh, I don't remember doing a lot of shivering uh, in Austin, Texas. Anyway, uh, I've already mentioned this story, but the story continues to roll in. This is Newsweek uh, version of the story. Carbon dioxide levels reach record high in Earth's atmosphere. No shit, Sherlock. Temperatures are on the rise and so is the level of carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere. The concentration of carbon dioxide levels reached an all-time high in April with a monthly average concentration of over 410 parts per million uh, according to new data, uh, I think we're right about 412 today. And this is just another version of the same No Shit Sherlock story. Earth just soared past yet another climate change milestone. The Earth's atmosphere is more saturated with greenhouse gases now than at any other time in human history. Oh, shit, Sherlock. For the first time on record, the average amount of carbon dioxide, the main long-lived gas responsible for global warming in the air, passed 410 parts per million for an entire month. The new record demonstrates that despite gains made in renewable energy and energy efficiency, uh, he's trying. Heat trapping greenhouse gases continue to build in our atmosphere, altering the odds and intensity of many extreme weather events, causing sea levels to rise and a myriad of other effects. This is uh, Kate Marvel. I've mentioned this woman. I'm trying to get her line for an interview. Kate Marvel from NASA's Goddard Institute, quote, we know exactly where that CO2 is coming from, and we're pretty clear on what it does. Hmm. We've been doing a lot of combusting since the Industrial Revolution, and all that extra CO2 has to go somewhere. Essentially, we have been treating the atmosphere as a dumpster for over 
150 years. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, for the faster than thought, or I guess this is the bigger than thought, headline of the week, many versions of this story, this is CNN's version, global tourism's carbon footprint is four times bigger than thought, study says. Yes, uh, oh shit, did the, uh, is the story here, okay, worldwide travel is a trillion dollar energy intensive industry, previous research has quantified total emissions from tourism as accounting for two and a half to three percent of global greenhouse gas emissions. These estimates, however, often did not account for emissions produced by, you know, tourism related uh, industries such as food and beverage, infrastructure, and retail services at travel destinations. Uh, so, conducting a more comprehensive analysis of global tourism. This is the University of uh, Sydney uh, looked at it through a more realistic light and they estimated carbon emissions by including the greenhouse gases produced to create in the tourism goods and services industry including local uh, transportation and uh, guess what uh, they now estimate that 8% that global tourism is in fact creating 8% of total worldwide greenhouse gas emissions uh, and half of that occurred in high-income countries. Wow. However, middle-income countries, notably China, recorded the highest growth rate of greenhouse gas emissions from the tourism industry. Overall, the U.S. tops the carbon footprint ranking followed by China, Germany, and India, the study estimates. No shit, Sherlock. Yep, yep, yep. That reminds me, I've got to make a plane reservation. Uh, here's this headline. Uh, says it all. A decade ago, climate experts were deeply worried. Now they are terrified. At the time of the Rio Earth Summit in 1992, the changing climate was a challenging but solvable problem. Or what they're talking about is that climate change uh, back in 1992 was just barely showing up on the radar. 26 years later, the outcomes are becoming obvious and we are locked into a one and a half degree average increase with two degrees almost inevitable. No shit, Sherlock. If there is no urgent action very soon, remediation will slip beyond our grasp. No shit. Prior to 1966, there had been no, uh, prior to 1976, there had been no coral bleaching on the Great Barrier Reef. Now, back to back bleaching means there is no recovery time left, leaving hundreds of miles of dead coral. But there is some good news with new solar-powered agriculture 
and industrial processes being developed. Uh, but with Carl Reeves dying before our eyes and climate changing everywhere fast, there is not a moment to lose. No shit, Sherlock. We lost the moment uh, in about 1992. Okay, let's go up there to Canada. Wow. Canada's oil sector faces significant challenges to reduce its emissions. Canada's oil industry faces significant challenge in reducing greenhouse gas emissions, which account for 26% of Canada's emissions. Uh, I went over this story on uh, Monday. Uh, the oil and gas sector released 189 megatons of CO2 equivalent in 2015 and under current projections Canada is on track to admit 722 megaton, uh, megatons of carbon dioxide equivalent per year by 2030 far more than its target of 523 megatons. As Robert Jensen was pointing out in his interview that I put on uh, Voices of the Doomosphere yesterday, no rational species would be pursuing tar sands oil extraction. Okay, we hear all this stuff about <clears throat> climate change's effects on the ocean. Don't forget, climate change's effects on freshwater lakes. Climate change will boost global lake evaporation with extreme consequences as evaporation will rise by 16% by the end of this century. Globe, this is from a study from Yale. Uh, <clears throat> global lake evaporation will increase 16% by the end of the century, triggering, among other outcomes, stronger precipitation events, according to a, no, a new study. Uh, <clears throat> while uh, in, in practical terms, this accelerated rate of evaporation over the coming decades uh, will trigger all of this shit. Uh, this is from Nature Geo Science. Uh, it gets very, uh, very technical, very quick. Uh, anyway, I think we get it. Right next to that story, greenhouse, greenhouse gas feedback loop discovered in freshwater lakes. This is latest research from University of Cambridge finds that plant debris in lake sediment affects methane emissions and the flourishing reed beds created by changing climates could threaten to double the already significant methane productions of the world's lakes. And we can certainly uh, talk about this with all of this, uh, these dams in the Amazon jungle, these hydroelectric dams, the, the unbelievable methane bomb that this uh, UN cheered uh, on solution to, uh, you know, to hydrocarbons, uh, cheering on all these giant planet friendly, yeah, right, uh, hydropower dams. 
as all of this, uh, the, the drowned rainforest will become the newest methane bomb, making hydropower probably a bigger culprit than burning uh, hydrocarbons. Okay, let's go up there to Russia. Russian Arctic glacier loss doubles as temperatures warm. <clears throat> this is from Cornell University. Uh, research shows that ice mass loss in the Russian Arctic has nearly doubled <coughs> over the last decades. This is quoting the report from uh, Remote Sensing of Environment. <clears throat> Glaciers there are shrinking by area and by height. We are seeing an increase in the recent speed of ice loss when compared to the long-term average. We are finding out that the ice is changing more rapidly than we previously thought. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, next. I see my uh, computer has eaten uh, Robert Scribbler's newest. What is Robert Scribbler ranting about this week? New Arctic Ocean deep in 20th deep in the grips of May temperature spike as beastly summer melt season is on the way. There you go. Uh, yes, beastly summer melt season is on the way. Oh, shit, so let's go down to those poor countries. Lives in the balance as UN debates climate finance. Behind wrangling at UN climate talks over financial aid for poor countries dealing with increasingly extreme weather and bracing for worse to come real-world projects that can save livelihoods and sometimes lives are queued up waiting for approval and money. Hmm. Rich countries are slowly opening the spigots to help reinforce coastlines sinking under rising seas, converting agriculture to drought-resistant crops, or switch public transportation from petrol to electricity powered by the sun and wind. Uh, but. It, the money falls well short of the $100 billion, otherwise known as 84 billion euros per year promised from 2020, and it is a pittance compared to the trillions of dollars experts agree will be needed to engineer the transition to a green economy. Oh shit, Sherlock. Okay. Next. Uh, this is EcoWatch's spin on the same story. Poorer countries will see greater temperature swings as planet warms. The countries that did the least to cause climate change are already projected to absorb the worst of its impacts from sea level rise to devastating heat waves. Okay, I don't know if South Africa is considered a poorer country or not. What's going on among other things in South Africa? Historic drought takes toll on South Africa's vineyards. 
the worst drought in living memory has hit vineyards in South Africa's Western Cape hard, reducing grape harvest and adding pressure on the region's centuries-old wine industry. Grape production is down 15% from last year leading to a production shortfall of 170 million liters of wine and prices rising as much as 11 percent. No shit, Sherlock. It will be more expensive to get drunk in the end times, but of course I wanted to save, uh, unfortunately, my bullshit detector button uh, is broken, we're going to let Huffington Post, those little greenies at Huffington Post, wind up this final edition of my climate change meltdown roundup rant with this hilarious knee sla slapper switching to renewables will save millions of lives. The last year has provided a chilling taste of what climate change will mean for human life in the United States from the island-wide blackout in Puerto Rico months after Hurricane Maria to record droughts in the west and record flooding from Florida to Houston. The weather is getting less predictable and more dangerous. <clears throat> Meanwhile, in, across the country, fossil fuel companies are setting up fracking wells that destroy sacred Native American land and threaten our health. This way of powering the world, as many of us have known for years, is unsustainable. No shit, Sherlock. So now is the time for America to go 100% renewable. That means we can be powered completely by wind, water, and sunlight. There is no justifiable reason why our electricity, heating, and cooling, and transportation needs are not powered by 100% renewable energy. It is doable, and every market sign is pointing in that direction. Anyway, guys, I have got to wrap up this final uh, climate change meltdown, ground up rant, uh, and get ready for my interview with Paul Ehrlich. And I'm sure Paul uh, will have a few things to say about climate change uh, in the 21st century. And you can listen to that on my new channel, The Collapse Chronicles, on Sunday for the final edition of my Climate Change Meltdown Roundup Rant. One more time, smoke them if you got them. We are so fucked. Bye, guys.